President's Day. It's coming up Monday. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> the I, best holiday there is. The one you always forget about. You walk up to the bank. Like, for obvious reasons. <laughs> like, you should just have Abraham Lincoln Day, and that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that one and Columbus Day are the two where you walk up to the bank, pull the handle really fucking hard. And you're like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. You forget. It's, oh, oh, right. It's a government holiday. So. Yeah. 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 Then you got to think about it real hard. There was an article uh, today. It was Genevieve Carlton writing for uh, All That's Interesting and also uh, Christopher Klein writing for History.com. And I was going to share this with you guys because uh, George Washington's death was fucking horrifying. And since it's his special day (laughs) on Monday, uh, I figured I'd share this with you. So while much is known about the life of America's first president, far less is understood about George Washington's death. In December of 1799, America's most famous founding father suddenly fell ill. At first, there seemed to be no cause for alarm. By that point, Washington had already survived an impressive number of diseases, including malaria, smallpox, tuberculosis, dysentery, tonsillitis, and pneumonia. Jesus. <laughs> tonsillitis was just to round out the list. <laughs> tonsillitis would absolutely kill you in the 18th century, though. Yeah, that's good point. The, good point. Yeah, thing. Yeah. You know, one of the most diseased presidents, I think, safe to say. I can only imagine what his breath smelled like. Oh, uh, oh. well, and considering all of his teeth were uh, Wood. wooden Wood. and yeah. ivory and rotten and dead people's teeth. <laughs> Terrible. But yeah, so... When Washington complained of a sore throat, no one expected it to be the end. But in a matter of days, Washington would be dead at the age of 67. So was the problem really a sore throat? And if not, how did George Washington die? No one knows for certain, but this may have been a case where the treatments were actually worse than the disease itself. (laughs) When doctors quickly rushed to Washington's Mount Vernon home... They had only 18th century treatments at their disposal. And sadly, these methods... (laughs) Medieval treatments. Straight up. Straight up (laughs) medieval shit. These methods made George Washington's death an agonizing affair that remains disturbing more than two centuries later. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. For a sore throat. Probably just had a strep throat. That's all. He probably some soup could have do it done, and he'd yeah. been like a few go. days rest. Yeah. <laughs> well, they tried. They tried that. I think. Yeah. Um, so on September seventeenth, seventeen ninety six, Washington announced that he would not seek a third term and instead would return to his Mount Vernon estate. There, Washington. So this is before they ruled that. There, there could be no third term. He set the precedent of that. So it was okay. never officially a rule until after FDR died because FDR won four terms right. and then the Republicans had more power starting after World <laughs> War II. So they were like, we're shutting this down because, uh, you know, he gave poor people money. So fuck him. Uh, yeah. We can't have that for 16 years. That's absurd. Sure, sure, sure. So, yeah, they kind of shut that whole thing down. But before it was, it wasn't a rule. It was a precedent that was set by Washington for not. So basically everyone was coming in being like, I don't want to serve more terms than George Washington. <laughs> and then, Georgie boy. Yeah, no. Right. But when FDR ran for the third term, it was because the war was going on. And he's like, we got Hitler to worry about. I need a third term and a fourth term that lasted a few months before he killed over. But anyway, mm-hmm. uh, Washington uh, spent his days managing five farms, 800 animals and 300 enslaved human beings. So always keep that in mind, because later in this, they're like, he died surrounded by his wife and his friends and his workers, workers. his yeah. employees. Well, like, yes. Interns. It's a- <laughs> <They're> interns. <laughs> the interns. You know those interns. Uh, so uh, on Thursday, December 12th, 1799, George Washington was out on horseback supervising farming activities. <laughs> fun way to put that (laughs) from the late morning until three in the afternoon the weather shifted from light snow to hail and then to rain upon washington's return it was suggested that he change out of his wet riding clothes before dinner known for his punctuality washington chose to remain in his damp attire okay so he just died of of a cold the stupidest shit that's dumb as fuck so he was this motherfucker was out here like nah i'm good i survived everything i've (laughs) survived the battle of yorktown god damn it i'll tell you uh, the, the the heel turn of the the hundreds of slaves he owned is uh makes the dying of a cold much more fun and the ensuing i'm sure medieval treatments oh yeah yeah, it's uh you know obviously bad dude george washington but the way he went out you're like okay i feel like you served some sort of penance for the shitty life you led uh considering how bad this is about to get so yeah he uh, sat at dinner the whole time the next morning it was snowing and this did not stop washington from making his usual rounds around the farm on horseback but as he attended to the estate he developed a bad sore throat this grew worse as the day progressed and that evening he was unable to read the newspaper aloud to martha so now his throat is like 
fucked up so bad he can't talk. He used to read the newspaper aloud to Martha, huh? Yeah, fun husband and wife activity. There was nothing to do at this point. Oh, yeah. You have to remember 18th century, right. 1799, reading out loud to your wife. That's an evening around the television set. was just set. light and farts and, right. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, just whooping off eight times a day. There's nothing to do. <laughs> In your damp clothes, too. Yeah, uh, your damp clothes. Just not even comfortable with it. Apparently, downtown, there was a horse that was unruly for 20 minutes, but was <laughs> thusly calmed. And my is like, tell me more, George. <laughs> so and then he lights a fart and she laughs and then they go to bed. <laughs> well, they have a pillow fight and then they go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's how people laughed back then. <laughs> <laughs> so Washington, uh, the next day he awoke uh, with trouble breathing and doctors descended on Mount Vernon in hope of reviving the former president. In the next few hours, they would try again and again to save Washington's life, but they only made the situation worse. <laughs> Punching him in the face is not working. <laughs> You're being funny, but it's not that far off. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Oh. Um, so the three physicians on the scene attempted to cure Washington with treatments that were common during the 18th century. In particular, they leaned heavily onto bloodletting, mm. the withdrawal of blood, which was meant to cure diseases. By the time Washington died, his physicians had removed 80 ounces of his blood from his nipples, <laughs> <laughs> which is roughly 40% of all of the blood in his body. Oh, God, they drained almost half of his blood uh, during that time. And bloodletting wasn't the only treatment they tried. One doctor, Gustavus Brown, recommended a dose of mercurius chloride and tartar anemic, which induced violent vomiting. <laughs> So they <laughs> so they bled him out. Oh Jesus! So he's already not feeling great, and they're oh. like, you, "You know what you need for uh, you being slowly suffocated by uh, your lymph nodes is uh, you need to vomit a bunch." <laughs> and that's how it's described in his Whoa! writing. Yeah. Whoa! So his throat's already fucked up. He's lost a lot of blood, and he's just ah! like, this is yeah. horrifying. Probably shitting his pants a little bit, too, in the midst of that. You know what I mean? Funny you mention that. Oh, Yet another God. doctor administered an enema. <laughs> so he was, he was definitely shitting his pants. <laughs> These are the future doctors of America. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're at now, with the enema. We do have to place on the tip of this canine's penis. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got uh he's lost a <laughs> tremendous amount of blood he's been violently vomiting and now he's had an enema stuffed up his ass I mean, well like the, a... <laughs> the, the, to keep him vomiting some of the doctors had to get fart in his face because he found it to be disgusting <laughs> Uh, Dr. James Craig, the general physician for the United States Army, then <laughs> swabbed Washington's throat <laughs> with a paste made out of pulverized poisonous beetles. <laughs> <laughs> you Dr. Quacks need to step aside. Let a military man handle another military man's affairs. <laughs> He's just got yeah, to have beetle juice. <laughs> yeah, literally put beetle juice in him. So it's called uh, cantharidin, and it's... It is like mouth just dislodged like a snake, and he just like put his whole hand on his... That would be preferable to this because cantharidin, mm. when it's put on the skin, causes horrifying blistering. God. <laughs> <laughs> so they shove a toilet scrubby down his throat with beetle uh. poison. And now <laughs> his throat is filled with blisters. <laughs> So, uh, I think is, uh, Washington was kind of like, uh, what's his character from Reservoir Dogs, Mr. Pink's? Like, I'm having a fucking bad day right yeah, now. Yeah, 100%. Fucking bad day. He gets shot and just fucks up the whole. <laughs> what the fuck? What was the original thing? He had like a migraine? A sore throat. <laughs> he had a bad sore throat. <laughs> yeah, and the idea, by the way, because at the time, 1700s medicine was, you know, essentially the same as Aristotelian medicine from way back pre-medieval and that was because they believed in the four humors which is blood phlegm yellow bile and black bile and they believed that if the four humors of your body were in balance you were healthy and then if something was off that uh they had to like if either, you have more blood than black bile yes yeah then you have to unhealthy. increase yes. your black bile and i believe that blisters are in this understanding of medicine blisters or yellow bile i think so mm -hmm. the idea is like oh we've we've let too much of his blood go so now we'll raise the level of yellow bile and By maybe that'll injecting help him, him <laughs> with with bug guts. Juice. yeah bug guts yeah bug guts and soot <laughs> and the yellow bile you can replace by peeing in his mouth <laughs> um so 
After the president's throat was completely destroyed by blisters, Jesus. they instructed him to drink a blend of butter, molasses, and vinegar, oh, at which point he nearly suffocated. This is a kill me yeah, I situation. Say, right. I would ask to be you shot in the, the day head. you ever had a sore throat. There had to be a bad place like, yo, I want to save the president of America. No, I'm going to save the president of America. Okay, let's see who can save him. <laughs> <laughs> There's three doctors standing around him trying to do all this stuff to him. They later gave him green tea and vinegar, and he nearly suffocated again. Jesus. Just give him yeah. green tea. Maybe that would have helped at the beginning. <laughs> just, hey, how about some green tea? For just you? quit <laughs> fucking with his throat. Yeah, just green tea. <laughs> quit, quit putting shit in him. <laughs> it's, just, it's not doing anything. So by the late afternoon... We gotta put more toilet bugs in there. <laughs> by the late afternoon, Washington's fourth bloodletting in 12 hours and an application of wheat paste to his throat... <laughs> So, <laughs> so the beetles didn't work. Uh, so now let's shove a bunch of flour down him. Were these doctors of an opposing political party <laughs> or something? Were these like all like trying to hide their British accents or something? Right. I feel like <laughs> right, he probably needs more. I mean, he needs more bug guts. Hey, hey. Is it possible the house was one of the doctors and stuff, and just was came in? It's like <laughs> fools are idiot. Obviously, he's suffering from meningitis, so we yeah. got to put some horse tranquilizers <laughs> in his girl. We got to uh, put this gold metal flour yes. all the way down his throat yeah so they uh they spackled his throat with wheat paste the weekend former president was struggling for air once again he turned to crake and said doctor i die hard but i am afraid or i'm not afraid to go but my breath cannot last long oh, i like kill he, me please yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much yeah yeah leave me the fuck alone george washington rose from his bed for the final time the next day at 5 p.m he told uh, tobias lear his secretary quote i find i'm going which is <laughs> real grammar. fun way to say I'm dying. Grammar's gone. I find I am going. I believe from the I first this disorder would prove fatal. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't say anything. He wasn't like, "Yo, bro, I think, I think, I think the first one. I think this is not going to work. We try to do." <laughs> it started as a sore throat. Right. I feel like you maybe, and that's what you get. When you announce the news to your wife every night right. in the newspaper. <laughs> uh, after reviewing his will, Washington returned to bed. The doctors applied more toxic beetle paste, yeah. <laughs> this time to create blisters all over the president's arms, legs, and feet. <laughs> So now his throat is covered in blisters <laughs> and his entire body pretty much. Jesus. Oh, it looks like the fucking elephant man at this yeah, point. Oh, horrifying, dude. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> kill me. Oh, <laughs> <more> wheat <paste. laughs> yeah, the wheat paste was helping. Oh, <laughs> Roll me in flour. <laughs> No, what they should they they took the wheat paste and then they like kind of crammed it into his urethra. <laughs> no, oh no, in my throat, not my tallywhacker, <laughs> which is what they called it back then. <laughs> yeah, so he's got the blisters all over him. About two hours later, Washington gave Lear instructions for his burial. <laughs> his only instructions soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, immediately. Uh, so Washington was always afraid of being buried alive. That was oh, apparently shit. a lifelong fear. So he said. Do not let my body be put into the vault less than three days after I am dead. Wait, is he just smelling up the joint then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, they, he was damn. a stinky motherfucker. They, they wanted, he, he was like, I want, you know, don't don't bury me because I, I, you guys got to make sure I'm dead. Chop his head off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Lear nodded at Washington. Washington asked, do you understand me? <laughs> when, <it> oh! <laughs> <laughs> when Lear finally said yes, it's Washington. Like crying bug guts. <laughs> <laughs> When Lear finally said yes, Washington uttered his last words, "'Tis well." And died. <laughs> That's it. Uh, at some point between 10 and 11 that night, uh, December 14th, 1799, George Washington died with Martha Washington and his employees uh, standing oh, at the foot God of his bed, <laughs> repeating what her husband had said before his death. Tis well. Modern day physicians believe that Washington was suffering from acute bacterial epiglottis. So again, just like an inflamed ass sore throat. Mm -hmm. Um but there is a little uh, a fun little postscript to this. So when the news of the 67-year-old former president's illness reached Washington, D.C., this is when we get one of those great people when you're reading history stories that just pops in for a visit and you're like, 
hey, wait, wait, I'm I'm done with George Washington. Who is this guy? Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, that guy's name is William Thornton, uh, who made the familiar journey to Mount Vernon, where he was a frequent guest of the president. Thornton was born in the British West Indies in 1759, attended medical school in Scotland before moving to the United States and gaining American citizenship. Although Thornton had no architectural training, Washington selected his his design for the new U.S. Capitol. Wow. Uh, So uh, although his original version never got finished because instead of the classic dome like they have now, it essentially was like, you know, the logo for a university. It was like it almost looked like a a cupola that was shaped like a gazebo. Yes. (laughs) Okay. It wasn't like a big dome. It just, it looked kind of stupid. But anyway. Now it looks all badass today. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. And this is the really crucial thing. Thornton was also a big advocate for the relatively new practice of mouth-to-mouth resuscitation and a firm believer in the possibility of reanimating the dead. Oh, Mm. shit. He was Frankenstein before Mary Shelley came along. It was like, hey. Yeah, so essentially the smartest guy that Washington was friends with shows up. You can breathe life into a corpse. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, literally. Uh, Thornton Is that like a sign of how dumb the times were? Or I think just so. this guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Thornton arrived at Mount Vernon after Washington's death. However, that did nothing to curb his confidence in being able to revive the dead president. His plan was to perform. Stand aside. <laughs> straight up. He just, bur- I, I mean, I imagine he just burst in the door in like a fucking fur coat or something. Yeah. Oh, like- <laughs> tastes like cereal and bugs. <laughs> oh. oh, no. De- Washington's dead. He's been dead by the time this guy oh, shows God. up. So uh-huh. he, he just shows up. He's like, I'm here to help. And they're like, he- he's dead. With what? <laughs> yeah. It's- uh, buddy, like- tis well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything is tis well up in this motherfucker, dude. <laughs> it's over. But yeah, so he arrived at Mount Vernon after Washington's death. His plan was to perform an innovative but extremely rare surgical technique, a tracheotomy. But he's dead, though. What would he accomplish? Well, the funny thing is, like, yeah. modern medical doctors say that if performed effectively, a tracheotomy probably would have saved Washington. <laughs> Because he just basically suffocated to death and then was, you know, rubbed with poisonous beetles. Uh-huh. But mainly he suffocated to death. The so way they would have done it correctly? Intuition. <laughs> yeah. Straight, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they would. They would. This feels right. Clonk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like if they had modern stuff at their disposal at that moment, that's probably what a doctor would say. Like, hey, you can't breathe. You know, stick a hole in their neck kind of a thing. Uh, air but, it out. Yeah, air it out. Uh, but uh, yeah, if performed correctly, that would work. But. Uh, at this point, Washington was dead, so it's kind of weird to do that, but that didn't stop Thornton from uh, pitching the idea. It being December, Washington's body was completely frozen when Shit. Thornton arrived. Oh, chronic job, yeah. So he's like mega dead. Uh, he was Walt Disney, and before Walt Disney did it, well, so he really was the first. So, okay. Oh, yeah. He's pioneered in so many different ways. Oh, yeah. Upon his encounter with Washington's stiff, frozen corpse, Thornton thought back to the cases that he had read of fish being restored to life after freezing and plotted the late president's resurrection. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so again, blood let out, toxic beetles, weed paste, suffocated, Corpse desecration. <laughs> yeah, and now we're moving into. They don't even let him alone after he's dead. Uh, so this was his Best plan. Thing to do to the hole in his neck now is to put all of our penises inside <laughs> of us. <laughs> I was surprised they didn't do that either. Like, let's try penis mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Penis to mouth resuscitation. It works, gentlemen. Uh, Allow me to demonstrate. This was Thornton's proposal. He said that he wanted to thaw Washington's corpse in cold water before rubbing him vigorously with blankets until he got warm again. What the fuck? (laughs) So he's frozen. They're going to thaw him out. And then they're just going to go snuggle, 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 snuggle. <laughs> Roll him around like he's a fucking His eyeball pug. pops out. Who's a good dead person? Like he's a fucking little dog. I'm just imagining him making the face that's on the $1 bill I know, right? the whole time. So, yeah, once he was warm again, they would then stab him in the throat, opening a passage to his lungs. And as Thornton recalled in the 1820s, he would then begin, quote, inflating the lungs with air to produce an artificial respiration. 
So they're going <laughs> to stab him in the throat. His hand's about to have artificial thoughts being expressed through his artificial gestures. So I just like to imagine it as like a, you know, Lucy and Ethel, like one's rubbing him, one's pumping his fucking lungs. Right. One's, one's moving his mouth. Being moving like, his mouth. I, 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 hello. I, 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 I. It's like jump starting a two stroke engine. Like you got to do it real fast. You know? <laughs> all right. Let's do it all at once. <laughs> Get Washington going again. Leave it out for 50 minutes for it to unthaw. That's the way it can <laughs> <laughs> like All right, now it's you gotta let Washington rest yeah, on the well, cutting board before uh, you, yeah, uh, before you stab his throat. What was his wife thinking the whole time this was happening? Was she just like, like well, please, God. I was tired of hearing those right. newspaper stories. <laughs> yeah, well, the, during the point where they're like rubbing him down with beetles and all that shit, I can't even imagine. Uh, to compensate, by the way, you might be wondering. Well, they drained forty percent of his blood. How's Thornton gonna give him blood back? He said, "Well, uh, since we took all the blood, we're gonna uh, replace it with the blood of a lamb." Oh, so they got biblical, basically. They're right. like, "Yeah, yeah, I think so." Or they, they I got think, like pagan sacrifices, right. so they're gonna they're gonna put the they're blood of the lamb. Him. So now someone's rubbing him, someone's pumping his the hole in his throat, and then another person is jabbing. And his another guy's jacking off in the corner. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's just a sheep on his pillow, just meh. Got a tube running into it. Somehow that actually did work, and he did come back. <laughs> So now he has, <laughs> oh, oh, what did I miss? <laughs> I've seen darkness. What's going on? <laughs> no, no, he just comes back and just kill me. Like, <laughs> Twas well. <laughs> Twas well. <laughs> So Good Lord, nobody else at Mount Vernon, however, shared the doctor's confidence. Quote, I was not seconded in this proposal for it was deemed unavailing. Thornton wrote. So they didn't end up doing this. Uh, wow. That was. But I just love a guy walks in. Everybody's sad that Washington is dead. And a crazy man walks in. He's like, all right, I got a plan. You gotta hear me out, Jerry. It's perfect. Like he absolutely Kramered into Mount Vernon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Have y'all tried using blankets? We yeah. just walk in this situation. just rub him around. Yeah, yeah, we roll him around. And he's coming right back. Uh, so Thornton died in 1828. His body is buried in the Congressional Cemetery in D.C. And uh, Washington, of course, and his wife are buried at Mount Vernon, Fairfax County, Virginia. So... Mm -hmm. Happy President's Day. <laughs> yeah, leave him alone. <laughs>